Hey, hello. <laughs> hello, everyone. Hello. Oi. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Oh. Hey. Hey. <coughs> Why are you breathing so hard? Um. Hi. Hey. <laughs> hey, my name is Ovi. <laughs> Uh, hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ovi, I'm doing a series on a PC build. Today, guess what we got from Newegg. Actually, you already know, you clicked on the video, but I haven't opened this yet. So today we're gonna open this and we're gonna talk about it while I'm installing it in the PC. It is the Corsair RM750X. And then while we're unboxing this and installing it in the PC, I'll tell you about why I chose this PSU over other PSUs. All right, let's go. And for today's unboxing, we're gonna be using the SOG seal pump. Okay, so I got this PSU for $115 from Newegg. I'm doing a white build, right? So I wanted to have a white power supply unit. So that kind of narrows down your choices. Also, I like Corsair because Corsair seems to have a good track record with power supply units. So there we go. Let's get rid of this box right here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I didn't really care too much whether or not the actual unit was white or black because it's gonna be hidden under that compartment. I don't even get to see it anyway, so I don't really care. But the thing is, if you get the black one, you get the black cables to connect to all your other parts, right? And I want the cables to be white, so I had to get a white one. Ugh! Ooh, scratch the box. So we decided that we wanted a white PSU, right? Because of the white cables. So choices were either go Corsair or go with Asus because those are the ones with good track records. I ended up going with this one because it is cheaper than the Asus white version. I think it's a Strix. So when picking a size for your PSU, you have to figure out how much power your computer is going to consume. You gotta figure out all the components, right, that you're gonna have in there. And I didn't pick the 750 based upon what's going in there now, but also what I might want to put in the future, right? Actually, let's just open this box. Let's see, what, what does this say? The cool features about this one, it is 80 plus gold certified. So that means that it has all Japanese capacitors which can handle up to 100, 105 degrees Celsius. And what gold certified means is that it can operate above 90% efficiency, right? You don't wanna get a bronze certified, it's gonna be less efficient, which means that you're really gonna be creating more heat and wasting energy. And wasted energy means you're paying a higher electric bill than what you need it to. This also has zero RPM mode for ultra low noise operation. The fans don't actually kick on at low powers with this thing. The RM line is very, it's modular, right? So you have the different connectors for different components. I don't like where you just have that big fat stack of cables coming out of the back of there and then you just have to figure out where to put it. This is a lot cleaner. It's nice. The X on the back means that this has a 140 millimeter fan and not a 120 millimeter fan. Also this series, they have magnetic levitation fans inside the unit and I have maglev fans going all through the case. So I wanted to keep it similar. And also it's supposed to provide you with lower noise operation. So we'll find out what else we got on here. Comes with one ATX 24 pin connector, two ATX 12 volt connectors, which are eight pins, four PCI connectors, which are eight pins, nine SATA connectors, nice. And eight peripheral connectors, that's a lot, all right. What else we got on here? Nothing, nothing, nothing cool. The way this one works, the fan will kick on at 300 watts. It'll start ramping up after 525 watts, but this claims that it never really goes over 21 decibels at 25 degrees Celsius ambient. That is important, temperature does affect it. And then of course you're gonna have an efficiency curve. I'll throw it on the screen. So when you're picking your size unit, you gotta factor in all the things. So like if I get AMD's top level cards, we're looking at 105 watts of power there. Your motherboard itself, you're supposed to put aside 70 to 75 watts for that one. Your RAM sticks are gonna take a few watts each especially if you have LEDs on there. You have all your fans and you're, you know, you got the LEDs on those fans, so you gotta factor those in. You have to factor how many uh, drives you're gonna put into there. Different drives use different amount of power, right? For my AIO, the CPU cooler, the pump actually uses very little 
but you know, when it gets hot, it ramps up. From what I've been able to find online, you should take about 15 watts for that. Your primary power consumption is gonna be by your GPU. So you wanna factor in whatever GPU you think you're gonna get and be able to handle it without having to change out your power supply. So you throw in like an RTX 3090 into there, that's gonna take, you know, close to 400 watts itself. But, you know, combining all the components that I was thinking for a perfect build that I would go for, we were looking at around 600 to 650 watts. Actually, I think when I did the RTX 3090 and a 360 millimeter cooler, I think I got close to 700 watts. You don't necessarily want to go too high on your power supply unit either, because I was thinking between an 850 and a 750, but that's where the efficiency curve comes into. So power supply units, especially for this one, it looks like its maximum efficiency is at about 60 to 70% of its capability. 70% of 750 is 525 watts, right? It looks like the efficiency stays up until about 75%. It's about 562 watts. My build coming in around 600, it's just over that. You know, you have to also think like this is under max load. Generally, the computer is gonna sit around three to 400 watts of power. Since I'm gonna be doing like some editing and stuff, I imagine I'm gonna be running my PC somewhere around 60%. So that should actually ramp it right around that 500 to 550 watt range. And that's exactly where I want to be with this one. So the 750, I think was the correct wattage for the system. All right, let me figure out how to open this thing. I think it's just this. Interesting box. Power cable. Good. Silica gel. Don't eat those. Zip ties. Book that I'm probably, eh, I'll probably bust through it. Important information. That's the one I don't care about. Oh, cool. All the cables come in this little baggie. Yes. Oh, that's cool. These are braided too. I got this nice braid on there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm eating some delicious food. All right. Now, I also did buy this brand new. I've been trying to find used parts for the PC, but one thing I don't want to get used is the power supply unit. You just don't know, you know? You don't know. You don't know what somebody's done with it. You don't know if all the cables connectors are there. You don't know how it's been run. You don't know if it's been in like a terrible hot setting. The other cool thing you could have gotten is their uh, CF series, which has the LED lights, the RGB lights, sorry, in, in the fan thing. So if you wanted to have more RGBs, this is gonna be sitting like this with the fan facing down. I, I'm not sure what the RGBs are for. And all the RGB ones are rated bronze. I don't want that. This one's good. This one's good. Let's put it in the PC. What do I need to know here? Congratulations on your purchase of your new Corsair RMX series high performance ATX power supply. Yep, 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 stuff I know. Mm -hmm. Ah, installing your new RMX series. Make sure your power supply AC power cable is not connected. No shit. Yeah, if your mother has a 20, you may connect the 24 thing. Blah, 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 blah. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna throw this into the chassis. In uh, future videos, when I'm actually installing components, I'll show you where to install them onto the um, the PSU. Caution, electric shock hazard. You would think it is a power supply unit. High voltage are present in the power supply. Yes, they are. There's capacitors in there. Do not use near water. Mm, boy. I hate that we have to put all these things because people just don't know anything anymore. Whatever. I don't think I need to take off this glass panel. But I'm going to anyway. Let's do a fitment test. Gonna go in just like this. And it fits. I was seeing if I had to move this bracket out of the way because the hard drive enclosure, you can actually move around depending on how big your power supply unit is. Comes with a cool little badge, powered by Corsair. All right, installing is simple enough. You throw it in here, screw it into the back, that's it. much it. There's really not that much to installing a power supply unit. So just to recap, when you're picking a power supply unit, make sure you're looking at how much power your computer is gonna need. Make sure you get something certified gold or platinum, and then just stick with the brand that has a good reputation. Corsair has one of the best reputations for power supply units. You can't go wrong getting one of their power supply units. So that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time. Until next time. Until next time. Until next time. Ugh. 
Kenny Miller. Prøv